Okay, so I've never done this before, so I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna try to do this more often because I don't have a lot of angles, like exciting angles to put up on YouTube, I don't have a lot of excitement in my life. But I do have some things that I am very, very knowledgeable about. One of those things, or some of those things are theoretical physics, astronomy, um, stuff like that, but some people find that boring, some people's eyes glaze over. The moment I begin to talk about that stuff, uh, and something else is um, sports, especially basketball. I am, I'm pretty sure there is no one that's either more knowledgeable about basketball or anybody that is a better analyst and is more dead on um, a higher percentage of the time that, that, than I am. So... I'm going to watch this video and I'm going to do this more often because I need an angle and I, I believe basketball can be a really good angle for me, especially right now that the playoffs are going on, but I believe also that I will, I will, how do I put it, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a complete rundown of all the free agents and whoever is available during the off season, but I'm going to do it from the perspective of a Lakers fan. I am a Laker fan. And I am enjoying the playoffs, despite the fact that the Lakers suck really bad this year. And as a result, never done within, never got within a light year of making the playoffs this year or last year. So I'm gonna watch this video. It's gonna play it for you, and then I'm gonna tell you my thoughts on it or whatever. So here goes. True Hoop TV, David Thorpe. What do you make of Billy Donovan as a Thunder coach? Ooh, that's a surprising question. Um, I think he's going to be, oh boy, excuse me for saying this. I think it's going to be a lot like Scotty Brooks. That's oh, what I think. On. That's I the wrong I answer. Think, it's not fun. No, I love Scotty Brooks. I think he's going to be a lot like him. Uh, I don't think he's the most, I'm going to say the worst thing I can say about him. I don't think he's the most creative offensive coach. Uh, that's the worst thing I can say about him. Guys are going to love playing for him. He's going to definitely preach defense. Uh, he probably will get guys to share the ball better uh, than what they did in Oklahoma City. And if he can't, then we'll know it was just the players all along anyway. But uh, I think he's going to be really consistent with his message. Uh, he used to be kind of a maniac as a coach, by the way. So was I and pretty much every guy in our 20s when we first started coaching. Oh, oh we're going with the story that's over for you now? At least on the coaching sideline, okay. for the most part, yes. I'm proud to say that it Hopefully is. Hopefully you can hear that uh, better. Billy is really poised and mature with his guys. We're not best friends or anything. I've known him for probably 20 some odd years now. But um, I have to say that I mean, just a year ago, Florida had won 30 straight games. They were Kentucky a year ago without the NBA players. Had won 30 straight. And then just got exhausted by the time the Final Four came around. Kind of like I think what happened somewhat to UK in the finals this year. Uh, but his guys will compete. And he, he's the best coach in college, I think, it, in terms of getting his guys to really understand spacing. So in the NBA, I think that'll work out even better. Uh, so that, that's a talent that he has. Uh, he knows how to talk to players and get into them and get the best out of them. Uh, and, but I think he's more like Scotty Brooks. Than the, and again, I think that's a good thing. He'll be a different voice. He has a different way about him. He's a New York guy and all of that. Uh, so the net result will be positive. I mean, they're, they're a really talented team which is why I think he's going to go in the first place. Okay, I'm just going to comment on that before I put it back. But if he's going to be like Scotty Brooks, I don't think that that is a good thing. Um, I don't like the Thunder. I never did. I never have. But they're, they were too talented not to succeed, not to, not to have only gotten to the finals once, conference playoffs, uh, what is it, twice and then lost. They're too good not to have either won or gone to the finals more years or been more competitive. Um, now, I know injuries um, had a lot to do with it, but still, I don't like Scotty Brooks because, in my opinion, he's not a coach. Any dumbass can say, can say, don't look at me. Give it to Durant or give it to Westbrook. They'll do something with it. That's my opinion, that's all I saw from Scott Brooks. Give it to Westbrook or Durant, they'll do something with it. You're the fucking coach. It's your job to implement a system in which 
you can get the most out of your players in which your players can't succeed because if your entire offense is give it to Westbrook or Durant, you're not a coach or a cheerleader. And that's what I always thought about him. I always thought that he was nothing but a cheerleader. And I didn't like him. Even though I didn't like the Thunder, they, I want them to succeed. They're too talented not to succeed. And it can't all be about talent. The fact that, the fact that they got as far as they did is a testament to how good Westbrook and Durant are. Those guys are insane. Um, I hope Kevin Durant bounces back even though I don't like the Thunder. I hope he bounces back because he's too talented and too young to have his entire career derailed because of a foot injury. So I hope he bounces back. But the fact that the Thunder um, have, have gotten as far as they have is a testament to how good Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant are as a duo and a testament to that you don't have to be that good of a coach when your players, your franchise players are that good. Um, it's actually kind of bad, but the reason Scott Brooks may have, may have held on to his job for as long as he did is because they were that good. If they were less good, I think his incompetence not him. Uh, Scott Brooks's incompetence would have been discovered earlier and he would have been fired sooner. I don't know about you, but I would have fired him two or three years ago. There were much better coaches in the NBA. One that was available last year, uh, one of my favorite coaches, the, the guy that I actually would have chosen for the Lakers instead of Byron Scott. Um, that guy is uh, Lionel Hollins. In my opinion, there are five very special coaches in the NBA. I'm going to list them. Like, if I had my pick to hire them for the Lakers, then these are my top five guys. Not necessarily in order, except for the first guy, which I'm not even going to count, because he has, if there is such a thing as tenure in the NBA, he has it. That is Coach Greg Popovich. That guy is insane. Because for him, it's about a system. That's why no matter which player plays for him, they they eventually get good because it's it's he has a really good system. It's just plug and play, you know, plug and play. You you plug in any player you want to into that offense around Tim Duncan, Ginobili, and Parker, and they will succeed. They will blossom. That's one of my favorite things about. Uh, Greg Popovich is that he gives you enough rope to hang yourself. If you make a lanyard out of it, good. You will keep on playing, you'll keep on getting rope until you hang yourself. Or they trade you to get someone better. Because that's another thing that I like about them. That if they can't hold on to someone, they trade them in for something, for something of equal value or something of greater value. Look at George Hill. George Hill was one of Greg was one of Greg Popovich's fav, favorite players. Favorite, yeah, was one of his favorite players, and they traded him in order to get Kawhi Leonard. And look at what happened with him. So they always, they always hold on to their best guys, and if they can't, they trade them for something of equal value or greater value. And in my opinion, when they got rid of George Hill, as much as I like him, they traded up. They got Kawhi motherfucking Leonard. That's, that's, that's like turning silver into gold. Gold into diamonds. Diamonds into, fuck, stardust. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, so, what was I saying? Oh yeah, these are my top five guys. Number one doesn't count because he has tenure. That's Greg Popovich. Um, and the other four are not necessarily in order, but... Uh, you'll see what I mean. Tom Thibodeau with the Chicago Bulls. He, um, his players always played tough. I always liked him as a coach. Frank Vogel with the Pacers. His players played great defense. Great effort. I always... Well, not always. Once I found out who he was and how he coaches, I like his style. So I like him. Frank Vogel. Tom Thibodeau. Lionel Hollins. The guy that I would have hired for the Lakers... 
last season instead of Byron Scott, who I really don't like. But for the sake of the Lakers, I hope he succeeds because I'm a Laker fan. Um, let's see. Greg Popovich, Tom Thibodeau, Frank Vogel, Lionel Holland, and maybe Jerry Sloan. And I like the way his players play, but he retired a long time ago. Not a long time ago, maybe four, five, six years ago, something like that. Yeah, but if I had to... So I guess I'm not going to count Jerry Sloan either because he retired. And the other coach, I think it's George Carl right now. Now you're going to say, where's Phil Jackson? He's the, he's the, what is it, the director of basketball operations for the Knicks. So he doesn't count as a coach anymore. Well, maybe once he's done with that, then I'll put him back in my list on my, as my number, as my number two. But, in, but until that time, I think my fifth guy would have to be George Carl. He's another guy that I would have hired for the Lakers rather than um, Byron Scott. So anyway, if what they're saying is true, this guy is like Scotty Brooks, then I don't see until the Thunder get somebody that can take them to the next level, they're not going to go very far. And if this guy is like Scott Brooks, he's not going to take them very far. Maybe they'll go slightly higher just because they're older and more talented and maybe more excited about having a new coach, you know, kind of a new leash on life, more excite, excited to play with something new, you know, like instead of an old ball of yarn, you have a new shiny ball of yarn, you play more enthusiastically with it. So if the Thunder do go a little bit farther, it won't, if this guy is like Scott Brooks, then it won't, the reason, if they go farther, the reason they go farther, it won't be because of him. But I hope they succeed. They're too talented not to succeed. So, like this guy, I mean, like Byron Scott, I hope he succeeds with the Lakers because I'm a Laker fan. This guy, I hope he succeeds with the Thunder because the Thunder are young. They deserve to succeed. They're too talented not to succeed. So I wish this guy luck. I hope he does well. But if he's like Scott Brooks and they do succeed, in my opinion, then it won't be because of him. It'll be in spite of him. So I know, like, for instance, there was always a lot of fighting about when the economy was really good under Bill Clinton. Like, was it Clinton's? Did he get credit for that? Right. So but I know that, you know, I know this from you as much as anybody. But, you know, Joakim Noah, Al Horford, Corey Brewer, like, that team, they loved each other, right? And they played, and a lot of coaches will screw that up, right? They'll get in the way, they'll, they'll, they'll inhibit those relationships. But, I mean, the fact is, even years into the NBA, those guys who, who learned to be teammates under Billy Donovan, they just will die for each other, which is a meaningful thing. Right, I think he's got, that's a good point. I think he's got another thing, which is uh, he's done a really good job of recognizing when first he had to go get more great players, the Mike Millers of the world, whatever, and he did that, Matt Bonner. I mean, he, had, he, was, in the, he was in the Final Four, you know, 2000. Uh, and then he kind of went away from that and looked for more of the four-year guy, and, and it worked. I mean, like I said, they won 30 straight uh, just a season ago. This was a bad year, but there were some injuries and suspensions uh, that didn't help the process. Uh, he didn't develop this great player named Kenny Walker, who's now uh, declared for the draft and everything. But... Um, uh, I think that he's done a good job of like a Scotty Wilbekin, who he took as a almost like as a preferred walk on 17 year old freshman, played him as a freshman. Four years later, he's the SEC player of the year. Nick Calathis was the best player in Florida for a couple of years as a high school player. Chandler Parsons was his sidekick. By the time he was a senior, Parsons was SEC player of the year. Still went second round. We now know what kind of player he is in the NBA, a big reason why Dallas got beat. So I think he's done a good job of recognizing talent, developing that talent with some patience, not throwing him into the fire and making him succeed right away. Over time, I think it's worked out for his guys more or less. That's why they've been so successful. Let me remind you, Henry, a year ago, ESPN.com had their basketball experts on the college side evaluate, I think, the top 50 coaches in the country in college. Do you know who number one was? Just because of the topic of this conversation, I'm going to guess Billy Donovan. Right. So it, it, that's got to count for something, too. And I completely reject the idea that Brad Stevens is somehow an exception. College coaches can coach in the NBA. 
they need to be. Uh, they need to understand that it shouldn't be about them the way it is in college. If you watch Billy Donovan, he takes his. He doesn't wear a jacket to games. He's got his long sleeve shirt on. I think he's just showing off that he's in shape. But he is not crazy histrionic guy anymore. He's very, I would say, almost like normal on the sideline, in control. You rarely see him lose his temper. That's going to play great in the NBA. And also remember this: he's coaching the the, the B team for Team USA, the younger guys for Team USA internationally. I think he's going to follow Shashevsky, or at least I think he was going to follow Shashevsky. I think a lot of people think that. Once Coach, once Coach K steps out, maybe he won't now that he's in the NBA. But if indeed he does, that's just going to be another opportunity to bond with the NBA players, including, by the way, he's got two subs in his team that play for that team. So I think that he's got lots of factors in place that, even though I like a Tory Messina a lot for that job, I think Billy do very well, like Scotty Brooks did. I wish him luck. I wish the Thunder luck, but if he's like Scotty Brooks, I'm not holding my breath.